Hey folks, how's it going? It is Yo Jo June, and in honor of all the Yo Jo June excitement, I thought I'd do a little bit of extra G.I. Joe Classified Series content on the channel today. And tell me this, have you noticed, I'm sure you have, that in the new packaging, the recent version of the G.I. Joe Classified Series packaging, they've been sneaking little referential homage Easter eggs into the background of the artwork. There's one there on rock and roll, I've got Shipwreck here. There you go, and there's a, one in the background of Shipwreck there, and that's super fun. It's been giving me a giggle, I've been seeing it and going, oh, I know that, that's from that, uh, that PSA, or that's from that episode. And so what I've done, and I really enjoyed myself doing this, is I've gone back and rewatched a load of G.I. Joe cartoons to track down the little Easter eggs. I've written it down as a list here on my iPad, and I'm going to share what I've discovered and let you know which episodes of the cartoon or which comic books the little referential Easter eggs are from, both from recent releases and from the pictures, from close inspection of the pictures of upcoming releases. So stick around and let's take a closer look with some clips at uh, where these little referential Easter eggs are from. Oh, cheeky side note actually on that. So I don't know if you know this as well, but all of the Sumbo era G.I. Joe cartoons are available to watch for free on Hasbro's YouTube channel. In fact, I think Hasbro Pulse has got a permanent live stream, or one of the Hasbro channels has got a permanent live stream, just rotating G.I. Joe cartoons over and over again. Not just the uh, original Sunbow, but they've got the uh, Retaliations and uh, whatever the other more recent one is. They haven't got the 90s one, <laughs> but they've got a fair few. So a lot of the clips that I'm using today and all the research that I've done for today was just using Hasbro's own channel. In fact, there's only one uh, that I haven't wasn't able to track down and had to use... Um, uh, suspicious means to get a hold of but what that does mean is that one day if i ever get monetized this channel this episode will likely be copyright claimed and will never get monetized so don't forget you can give a super thanks you can join the channel if you want to support and help me afford to buy more figures to review for your viewing pleasure uh, and just you know for the pain and torture of sitting through loads of gi joe cartoons <laughs> <laughs> for research. It wasn't pain and torture. I had loads of fun. Although the cartoon is totally balmy. Side note on my side note. Cobra are better than G.I. Joe. Fact. If you sit down and watch all the cartoons back to back, certainly the Sumbo ones, Cobra make better plans and strategies. They're tactically better. They're equipped better. And they actually achieve their strategies more often than not. It's only by some kind of weird twist or weird coincidence or a stroke of luck that G.I. Joe managed to defeat them most of the time. <laughs> Cobra is better than G.I. Joe. Anyway, let's get into it. Let's talk about the little Easter eggs in the back of the packaging, shall we? Right then, folks, I'm going to kick us off with Copperhead. Here's his packaging uh, in my little breakout box here, although I'll probably make it bigger than usual so that you can see. Uh, and in the background of Copperhead's image, if we zoom in and take a closer look, you'll see that there's a little kind of uh, South American jungle temple thing in the background. Now, this is from the Sunbow series, the first season. It's episode 10 called Jungle Trap. And here is a little clip from said episode showing you when it shows up. How much farther, poison breath? Oh, you're just aching to get blown away, ain't you, chump? Well, that's okay, because here we are. Thanks. We'll take it from here. Right, let's see, who next? Let's go to Low Light, so uh, a recent reveal that we can all pre-order, but as part of the reveal, they showed us the packaging, it's there, and you can go take a look on Hasbro Pulse, and that packaging there is definitely, definitely, it, well, I say definitely, in my opinion, is a homage to a classic piece of G.I. Joe artwork, it's issue 272. Uh, of a real American hero during the IDW era. Uh, this is uh, an alt art cover here, um, but it definitely feels to me, ooh, cover girl just fell over. Cover girl there, obviously blown away by the awesome quality of John Royal's artwork here. Oh, did I say 272 before? I meant 262. But yeah, this is an alt art cover, uh, and I'm pretty sure that the packaging on low light, uh, the G.I. Joe Classified Series packaging on low light, is an homage to that. Let's go back to cartoons then. Let's take a look at Shipwreck. So here's Shipwreck's packaging. I've got the box here with me today. There's this little bicycle propped up on the um, submarine fin at the back there. 
there's rockets launching. I don't know whether the rockets launching are relevant, but the bicycle is a reference to a PSA, a Sunbow PSA. Uh, I, I don't know which episode it's from. I'm only familiar with it from seeing a G.I. Joe cartoon PSA compilation that was put together. So I think maybe it was on one of the DVD releases or the VHS releases back in the day. Perhaps some of you more knowledgeable North American folks who experienced this for realsies the first time around can drop down into the comments below and fill in some of my knowledge gaps there. But it's the one where Shipwreck has a word with a couple of young kids about stealing bikes. Theft is no good. And here's the clip. Nice bike. Maybe we could borrow it? No, that's stealing. I'll ask for permission later. Uh oh. Looks like you're asking for trouble now. Shipwreck! <laughs> I love those PSAs. Knowing folks is half the battle. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on then, and we've got Scrap Iron next. I've put my box down somewhere for Scrap Iron. I don't know where I've put it, uh, but here it is. Here's a picture of it anyway on the screen. And you can see in the background there behind Scrap Iron, we've got the bus, uh, the little school bus in the background. And this is a reference to the first arrival of the Battle Android Troopers in Arise Serpentor Arise Part 1, uh, which I think is the first clump of episodes in Season 2 of the Sumbo series of cartoons. So there you go. Let's have a quick look at the clip. Why is Cobra Commander using stuns? They're fast, but they don't have the armor or the punch of the old his tanks. Maybe old Chrome Dome is running low on... Hold on! What are those things? They look like robots. Battle Android Troopers! Forward and destroy! That follows that where Sergeant Slaughter just goes in and takes out all the bats in hand to hand combat on his own because Sergeant Slaughter is amazing. Right, let's keep it rolling. And the next one I clocked was on uh, Rock and Roll's box. Hang on, I've got that one. Here it is uh, the rockets in the background. Well, I think that this is, I, I could be wrong on this one, so I'm open to any comments or suggestions down below. And the reason that I think I've got it right but could be wrong is because up till this point, each of the characters, the Easter egg is sort of connected to them. So Copperhead is um, in the Jungle Trap episode. Shipwreck is obviously the key G.I. Joe character in the PSA. Uh, Lowlight is the key character in the cover uh, that I've talked about. Uh, Scrap Iron, you can see he's on the remote. He's the one who opens the back of the door to let the bats out. But I don't think Rock and Roll appears all that prominently in uh, what is... I should have said, The Pyramid of Darkness, Part 1, and the title of the episode is The Further Adventures of G.I. Joe. Um, so I'm not sure whether this is right or not, but that's the episode that I think it's from. And here's a clip of the shuttle. Talk to me, Lady J. What do you see from your POV? Nothing serpentine, Flint. So far, the launch looks W.O.C. W.O.C.? Without Cobra. I think I'm picking up enemy readings. Uh-oh, battle alert. We got snakes in the dirt. Yeah, let me know. I've watched an awful lot of G.I. Joe cartoons, so I'm either A, wrong and misremembered whether rock and roll was in the episode, or B, there's another episode where rock and roll does feature more prominently, where there's a shuttle involved, a shuttle launch involved, either or. Or maybe maybe the, that's it, it's just relevant, I'm not sure. Uh, anyway, who's next on the list? Hey, tell you what, let's do a comic book one next and let's talk about Grunt. So here's the Grunt packaging that's been revealed in the pre-orders. And uh, I believe that the burning crashed helicopter in the background there is a reference to quite a well-known G.I. Joe story called uh, Snake Eyes, The Tale Untold, which is specifically, let me check my notes, uh, a Real American Hero, Volume 1, Issue 144. Now, this is the issue that has a flashback sequence uh, where there's Grunt, uh, Stalker, Scarlet, Snake Eyes, and someone else, maybe uh, Wild Bill's involved somewhere. Maybe he's flying the helicopter. Anyway, my memory's hazy. But uh, this is the flashback story that tells of the damage and scarring to Snake Eyes' face that led him to where the mask can keep his face covered up. And Grunt was also on that mission and one of the passengers on the helicopter. Incidentally, if you've never read it, um, his face gets burnt. Um, he saves everybody and then says, yeah, I'm all right. Let's crack on. And cracks on with the mission, just wraps a load of <laughs> stuff around his head and just gets on with it, even though he's in like... <laughs> 
<laughs> debilitating pain because he's snake eyes, of course. <laughs> but there you go. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure that that helicopter, that burning helicopter in the background on Grunt is a reference to the snake eyes, the tale untold little storyline in the comics. Okay, cracking on then. And we've got two characters referencing the very same Easter egg here. We've got Torpedo and the Cobra Eel, both of which are depicting these big sea serpent worm things coming out of tunnels underwater. Now, this is a reference to the Sunbow episode, The Mass Device Part 3, The Worms of Death, which is obviously from the Mass Device miniseries. It's the third episode in the Mass Device miniseries. Uh, and as you can see from the clip I'm about to show you, Torpedo features very heavily, as do the Cobra Eels, when the worms appear. Let's take a look. Torpedo, carry on with the mission. We'll try to cover you. Roger, dude. Give me water. Here I come. So there's Torpedo and Cobra Eel, and you can see that it looks like the two images tied together and they're from either ends of a submarine or ship or whatever uh, with the, the big worms of death coming out of these uh, pipes in at the bottom of the ocean. Okay, cracking on, let's take a look at the uh, female Cobra Trooper 2-pack, the Cobra Valkyries. And on here, if you take a look in the background there, you'll see that there is a dog with glowing eyes in the doorway. Now that is Mutt in the background there, and it is a reference to a Sumbo era episode called Cobra's Creatures, where an evil scientist called uh, Dr. Lucifer, with a, with a special weapon called the High Frequency Ray, or something like that, is able to take control of animals, and he takes control of Mutt in the episode. Don't believe me? Let's take a look. I freak can control the mind of any animal or insect anywhere on Earth by means of this central control module. Watch. Look, you can mess with my mind, you crazy quack, but nobody messes with my pooch! Jerk! Get tough, fella! I freak transmit sound waves that only affect animals and insects. The dog belongs to Cobra now. Does it indeed? Let's find out. The game is hunt. You are the prey. He is the hunter. <laughs> You know that things will have got pretty desperate with G.I. Joe Classified Series if they end up bringing out a Dr. Lucifer figure. <laughs> I don't think there'd be a great deal of interest in a dude in a white coat with a little weird sci-fi <laughs> ray gun thing. But hey, who am I? Maybe you want one. Maybe you're the person who would love a Dr. Lucifer. Let me know in the comments down below. Right, who's next on my list? Let's have a look. Ah! Snow job. Okay, let's take a look at Snow Job's packaging here. So here's Snow Job, and you can see in the background there is a polar bear hanging out, about to kick off with Snow Job, which you might just think, well, it's Snow Job. He's like an um, Arctic gear dude, and so encounters with polar bears would be a very normal, straightforward, natural thing to depict on his packaging. But no, this is actually an Easter egg reference to a cartoon episode as well. This is Haul Down the Heavens, which is season one, episode 15 of the Sunboat era. And here's a quick clip. Gotcha. On second thought, help yourself. A very talented polar bear. I, I really quite enjoyed the way he took Scarlet's spear and just kind of snapped it and <laughs> discarded it in such a sort of anthropomorphic, humanised way. Brilliant. So there is the polar bear explained. Right, next on the list, let's have a look at Big Ben's packaging. And Big Ben is, uh, he's got a little corgi in the background there. Can you see the corgi at the back of the tunnel there? Now, that is a reference to a DIC episode, the first and only DIC episode rep reference that I've managed to track down. And this is Chunnel, 
It's an episode where Cobra Commander and Cobra kidnap the Queen. And the Queen has a bit of a conversation with Cobra Commander about the care of her corgis while in his captivity. So let's take a quick look at that. Circus, I am the great Cobra Commander. Ah, a snake handler. Then my fufu will be no bother for you. Your, your what? Huh? Wait. So just here. circling back round to uh, what I said before, I I'm not very familiar with the DIC series. Um, I, I know GI Joe. I've said any any regular viewers will know that I've said that uh, I'm all I was all about Action Force in the 80s, reading Action Force comics, which was the UK version of GI Joe. Then I became more interested in GI Joe and read the Marvel comics, and then years later I started to watch the cartoons, get a bit more caught up, and so I'm familiar with the Sumbo ones in particular, but never really engaged with the DIC. I don't know if they had a dvd release or anything here in the united kingdom so if there's any dic episode references on any of the packaging like um uh, the range viper i know that that was a kind of key figure in the dic series maybe as opposed to um the uh, the more uh, classic 80s real american hero stuff that i'm more familiar with or the comic book stuff that i'm more familiar with um now the range viper's got some purple crystals at the bottom of his box and i did wonder that was a reference to the one where cobra uh, uses some magical purple crystals to take over the the minds of family members gi joe family members was that a purple crystal i think it was and that one's called uh captives of cobra or cobra's captive something like that but the range viper is nowhere to be seen is not not in the storyline and the crystals were sort of out in the desert rather than growing out the grass underneath them so i don't know so any suggestions on that one or maybe whether that's a dic reference or a comic book reference that i've not come across I, i'd welcome it in the comments below folks so please let me know okay next up then let's have a look at tunnel rat so here's the packaging that was in the pre-order reveal and i knew this one straight away because even though we didn't have the cartoon series particularly regularly here in the united kingdom and as i say i didn't catch up till the dvd release years later one thing that we did have was gi joe the movie and i watched that one loads proper saturday afternoon cartoon and stuff and uh, i recognize this little easter egg reference straight away the bell in the background because this is a reference to the famous beachhead training scene where he's trying to whip the new recruits into shape and tunnel rat and big lob do an obstacle course set up for them by beachhead that involves them getting to the other side of the obstacle course and ringing this bell let's take a look at the clip Crowd ain't the only there you thing go, there's tunnel wrap, and there's the the bell in the background. And there you go, folks. That's all the little Easter egg references to cartoons and comic books I could find in the new packaging. I have undoubtedly missed something. I've called a few out as I've gone along, so if you know those, definitely let me know in the comments down below. But if I've missed one or one of these is wrong, quite happy to admit that I'm incorrect. I'm a bit shaky on the rock and roll one. Um, there, for example, then absolutely let me know. I'd love to maybe do a follow-up vid or uh, keep an eye on some other packaging uh, that's coming out to see if there's any other of these little cheeky references, these little Easter eggs in there, because it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun sitting down and watching a load of 80s G.I. Joe cartoons um, and realising that Cobra were far superior <laughs> in methodology, strategy and success. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was great. And I definitely laughed out aloud plenty of times. So let me know down in the comments below. Uh, and if you enjoyed this video, it's the type of thing that you want me to do more of. Let me know about that. Make sure you give me a like and all that good stuff. Don't forget you can join the channel now and give me super thanks, and blah, 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 YouTube -y, pitchy stuff. Um, and if you're not already subscribed, make sure you hit the subscribe button at the very least. Um, I know that a good 80% of you folks out there watching these vids are not subscribed. So do us a favor. It takes you a minute, but it means ever so much to me and it'll help me grow my channel even further. So yeah, right, there we go. Always the same with me. Never know how to end these videos. So uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you later, folks. Bye-bye now.